So heat inputs and arc energies, why do we use them? What are we trying to do? What do they control? Let's go through that right after this. So the purpose of either arc energy or a heat input figure is really to give us an upper and lower band, uh, a guidance of where we should be during welding to create uh, mechanical properties that we deem fit for the application we have in hand. Different specs apply different upper and lower tolerances. Uh, British Standard has plus or minus 25%. Uh, AWS is no lower than what we've qualified, but so it's important to, to make sure you're in line with your specification or your code. But the intent is, is really the same. The biggest bit of confusion we see when we're teaching this either is like, as part of a, a C-SWIP course or a, um, a client-specific course is that candidates and students try to jump between the two while in the same question. So if I was to start with heat input, I should really use heat input all the way through my process. If I start creating heat, uh, heat input figures during a PQR using a thermal efficiency, but then when I come to create my ranges, I don't use a thermal efficiency factor, that can cause quite a lot of issues and potentially lead to the, uh, the scrapping of welds that didn't need to be if the admin was done correctly. So let's, first of all, just concentrate on what the difference between arc energy and heat input is. So when we look at our arc here, we have an arc, a, a, a TIG welding arc between a non-consumable electrode and a workpiece. Our arc energy is the energy inside of that arc. So it's, it hasn't yet made the workpiece. It's not in the weld pool. It's just what's in the, the bright blue light. Yeah. We don't apply a thermal efficiency. It is, it is a very, it's the most basic of the calculations. And then we have heat input, which is as that arc energy moves across, how much of that energy actually gets into the workpiece? Yeah. So I guess, so does it really matter where we're measuring? Well, not really, like I said, as long as it's consistently the same point within the same document. And we also make it clear in our documents which one of these we're using. So what's the difference? Well, here you go. So arc energy and heat input for the main are the same calculation. Now there's lots of ways of doing this calculation because it's maps, you can move it around and you can rebalance where you take numbers. But if you're starting out in, in, in the calcs and you, you're not sure, pick one and work with that. Uh, I always find this is the easiest one to start teaching with. So our basic calculation is amperage times voltage times 60. Divide that number by our arc uh, travel speed times a thousand. And you should end up with some quite a big numbers there. If you do uh, an amperage times voltage times 60 and it's three digits, then probably there's something wrong. Um, but you should, yeah, you should get two big numbers dividing by each other. And then the only real difference between our arc energy and our heat input is what we call the thermal efficiency factor. So that changes between different welding processes. And I have here a quick, um, a, a quick list of the main welding processes we see and their thermal efficiencies that goes along with them. So submerged arc has a thermal efficiency of one, down to GTW or TIG, which has a thermal efficiency of uh, 0 0.6. And these numbers really come from 
that initial thing we talked about, about how much energy makes it from the arc into the weld pool, into the material. So which, with submerged arc welding, the arc is very much encapsulated within the flux. The arc is buried. Uh, so all of the heat for this calculation is transmitted down into the weld pool. Where with GTAW or TIG welding, we have a lot of places to have heat loss during that transmission. So for instance, the non-consumable electrode is gonna get hot and keep some of the heat. We're gonna have radiated heat and light out from the, from the weld pool. And so not everything is going to get into the, into the material. So in comparison, submerged arc has 100% of the energy, but GTW only has about 60% of the energy. So you can see if you start jumping between arc energy and heat input, you can end up in a position where your figures could be 40% different. Now that could really throw up alarm bells during, during manufacture of a product if someone says, well, this, this number is so much different to what my well procedure says it should be, what's going on? You know, and it, again, it potentially is just an administration change and uh, something not being clear in, in the equation. So now we know our, um, know our equations. Let's do some questions. So these questions are very similar to what would sort of be in your, uh, your C-SWIP exam or your uh, CWI exams, where it's gonna say, okay, calculate a heat input or arc energy. So the, for the first one here, we've got a, a welding inspector is checking arc energies produced during the welding activities. The inspector records the data below. So, and what is the arc energy? So he's recorded 358 amps, 30 volts, and a travel speed of 310 millimeters a minute. Now, what I always do when I'm answering these questions still, even though uh, you know it's 20 years in now, I still write the equation out, especially in an exam. Okay, I know I want arc energy, so I write my equation and then I just fill in the missing gaps from my question. And this is always great because this stops you going awry and just gets you to focus a little bit. Uh, so input my data, I have an arc energy equals 358 times 30 times 60 divided by 310 times 1,000. And then I get an answer of 2.07871 kilojoules a millimeter. Now, you can round out that final figure however you want. Uh, I'll leave that to you to, to work out how you want to round, if you want to round up or you want to just have significant figures. Again, in your documentation, pick one and stay with it. And it makes it a lot easier when you start applying ranges. And then we have a second question, which is, okay, a welding engineer is gathering data for a welding procedure qualification record using a GTW process. The data below is recorded. So we have 36 amps, 12 volts, and 25 millimeters uh, of travel speed. So our heat input calculation, again, starts like our arc energy. It's exactly the same, but now we have the thermal efficiency. So we input our data, and from the chart we had earlier, we have a thermal efficiency of 0 0.6. So I take my number from the arc energy and I times that by 0 0.6 and I'll get a number of a 0 0.62 kilojoules a millimeter. So it's that simple. It, people can make this very complicated, can get very worried about it. But remember, if you just stay with writing your full equation out, pick one way of doing it and work through the questions or through your calculation on, on, on the job site, it should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so remember to like and subscribe. We're going to have a couple of videos like this, uh, maybe once a week, and we're going to definitely cover most of the C-SWIP content in short little bite-sized bits. 
So if this is any use to you, hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you very much.